Norway Chess round one. The tournament proper has started. And I'm looking at the game between Fabiano Caruana and Magnus Carlsen. Yep, two old rivals going back, well, years and years. But of course, they played their World Championship match in 2018, which was very tight. Well, this is an interesting clash because in first round, because neither player has played too much chess since playing in the Tata Steel tournament in January. You might remember that Carlsen absolutely crushed Carol Anna in their game uh, in the Tata Steel. So, well, let's see what happens. Um, Carol Anna with white. Little surprise. No e5 from Carlsen. He's playing e6. Um, perhaps the French is enjoying a little bit of a comeback at the top level. You know, having seen Ding employed in the World Championship match. But a little bit of a surprise. But for someone like Caruana, I would say that it would be a welcome surprise. You know, he's a, a classical e4 player and... Well, well versed in, in in the openings, and well, the French doesn't represent a huge problem. I would say the classical. Okay, that's the variation that I always enjoyed playing. And e5, you can of course go bishop g5 as well. So white takes a space advantage, and c5. This is such an important move in the French. So what you're doing is you're trying to undermine this pawn on e5. So you're attacking the weak spot in white's position, that pawn on d4. This is where all the tension lies in the position. So white supports that pawn. Knight c6 and bishop e3. So you can see it's all directed against this pawn. Now there's lots of ways to play this. Uh, a6... It, as played by Carlsen, is very normal. You can also take and play bishop c5. You can play bishop e7 and castles. But anyway, e, a6. And here, well, the, the old way of playing was queen d2 and then b5, and all gets very exciting. But Caruana goes for knight e2. So it's all about bolstering that pawn on d4 and potentially going c3 as well, just to support the pawn. I mean, black can just play b5 here and play something like this. This is possible. But Carlsen plays the computer-approved move, which is queen b6, immediately putting pressure on the pawn on b2. So if the queen were on d2, then you could actually castle queenside here. But, well, that's a little bit awkward. You don't want to play b3 because that would weaken these squares, these dark squares. So Caruana plays queen c1. Uh, you know, not the ideal square for the queen. However, it does protect that bishop on e3, which could be useful sometimes. Now, bishop e7 from Carlsen, okay. Modest development, but looks fine. And c3, supporting the pawn on d4. Castles. Now here, a few games have been played with h4 and, and rook h3. Um, but that does leave the king stranded in the middle. g3, the way that Caruana played, is very much more in his style. Um, you know, he wants to develop soundly. So black has a problem here. You can see that bishop simply cannot move. That is very much the bad French bishop. So, you know, how exactly does, does black develop here? You know, it's a problem. You can't move the b pawn because the queen stands in, its, in the way. So Carlson goes for f6. So he's trying to introduce perhaps some tactical threats on the F file. And if that's taken, then the knight can recapture and then the bishop comes out and you know this knight has potential. 
Bishop g2, very sound, protecting the knight and preparing to castle. But this is still a problem. So Carlson exchanged on d4. Now, in this case, recapturing with a piece wouldn't be so good because now that Carlson has played f6, then that e5 pawn is vulnerable. So pawn takes pawn, and that means this diagram is now open. So queen a5 check. Okay, the queen moves, and that means the knight can come to b6, and then the bishop can emerge on d7. So if bishop d2, then queen b5, and that's a bit annoying for white. So white can't castle immediately. So check knight c3 and knight b6. So there we can see that Carlson is unraveling and can bring the bishop to d7. So that knight wants to hop into c4. So Caruana decides to do something about that. First of all, he takes on f6, bishop f6. So that means he doesn't have to worry about any threats on the f-file. And then he plays b3. Stop that knight coming here. And, you know, that means this knight is really poorly placed. Sooner or later, Carlson is going to have to redeploy that knight, but it's, it takes time. On the other hand, b3, while it covers the, the a4 and c4 squares, also slightly weakens these dark squares. So there are pros and cons. Anyway, bishop d7, Carlson develops, Caruana castles, so he's got his king to safety, that's nice. And, you know, Caruana can be pretty happy with this position because it's got nice space advantage and the e5 square is, is clamped so you don't have to worry about a pawn break. And I think the, the question in these kind of positions is can white successfully maintain this space advantage? Can white cramp black? You know, if you if you get control in this position, that it's very unpleasant for black. So Carlson has to fight against that, find you know, tactical ideas, maneuver his pieces to better squares. You know, this is a potential outpost for a knight, for example. Very often this maneuver is very nice to bring the bishop round to this diagonal. First of all, rook c8. So already some tactics here because of the pawn has moved. Queen d2. Now, this is an important moment in the game where you know, black has to choose how to try and stir up trouble, how to break free somehow. First thing I would look at with black is knight takes pawn. Is it possible to take here and then simply take the knight? There's two pieces attacking the knight. In fact, tactically, it's not possible. Let's just look at this very quickly. So knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, if queen takes knight, then queen takes knight here, and white emerges a piece up. And if rook takes c3, then b4. And that disturbs the queen, uh, which was defending both these pieces, and white wins material. It's those kind of little tactics you've got to get right. And, you know, people think that if you're a positional player, then somehow, you know, you... you you rise above those tactics. You you you, you play um, with grand strategic ideas. You can only play these grand strategic ideas if you look at all those little tactics and make sure they don't work, basically. So what else can black play? Well, what about this knight? You know, for me, this is the problem piece in black's position. So I would look to redeploy that. So knight a8, I would certainly consider here. And this knight comes into the game via c7, possibly via e8 to d6, possibly via b5 as well. Uh, looking here and looking there. Um, the problem is it's quite time consuming. And white has time, for example, to play like this. Knight e5, which is really disruptive. Um, so 
this is not an easy position at all. Um, another idea, knight e7, perhaps to bounce around here. But watch this. Again, a, a tactic. Knight e4, opening up this diagonal. Queen takes queen. Of course, you have this intermezzo and it's check. And then you recapture. White has the two bishops. Uh, still have a sp has a space advantage, and this bishop can can look to play to some very nice square. White is better. This is not an easy position for Black. Carlson played bishop e7. So looking to come into to one of these squares. And Caruana didn't like the look of that. So knight e2. Just exchanging queens. So the knight has redeployed. It defends the d4 pawn, so it might be possible to play this knight in to e5 at some point if necessary. But removing the knight from c3, of course, just avoids lots of tactics. So how should black play here? Still, this knight is an issue. Um, you know, I would, again, I would consider knight a8 come back there. It's time consuming, but still. Um, you could also look to play bishop a3, stop a, a rook coming here. Um, there's also this move bishop e8 as well. But the position feels better for white because it's hard for black to, to counter. You know, white's control in the center. Carlson played rook c7. I think he was probably look, probably looking to play that knight via c8 to d6, which would be a fine square, the d6 square. But there is a problem. Rook c1 is an excellent response. You can see there's a pin. So that knight on c6 can't move. And, well... Let's just have a quick look at here. I should just say Carlson played rook rook c8. Um, but let's just have a quick look at knight c8. What would happen? Okay, question for you. How should white play in this position? I'll have a quick slurp of tea. Cheers. White to play. This didn't happen. But I have a feeling this was Carlson's original intention. But there is a problem here, and the problem is f5. Now, if this is taken, let's say rook takes, bishop h3, rook goes back, and knight e5. This is really powerful. So that knight can't be taken. Um, the rook can be captured. And otherwise, white is threatening to take here and take on e6. So that's one problem. And if pawn takes, then knight f4 is incredibly strong. Black's pieces are just so awkwardly placed. They tread on each other's toes. Knight takes is coming. Um, potentially knight e5 as well. This is, this is better for white. So after rook c1, it, it's very difficult for black to maneuver. So Carlson played rook c8, protecting the rook. Okay, over to you again. How should white play here? Caruana came up with an excellent move. White to play. f5 again. And here's the problem. If pawn takes pawn, this time not knight f4, but bishop f4 traps the rook. Really nasty. You can see how these pieces, black's pieces, are really tightly placed. There's no room to manoeuvre. And f5 doesn't win material, but it you can see that it, it liberates white's pieces. That bishop can come out. This knight finds a nice square. The rook potentially comes into play as well. Just when this rook has actually moved away from the king side. Carlson played bishop a3, attacking the rook. Rook e1. So bishop f4 is still a problem. Um, therefore, 
bishop b4 to exchange off the bishop and to try and get some play on the queen side. This was taken. An exchange on e6 and now knight f4. Well, you know, every picture tells a story. Look at black's pieces on the queen side. If black has time to try and you know, enter into white's position and, and attack the queenside pawns, very good. But look at white's pieces on the other side of the board. Well, apart from the fact that this bishop is attacked straight away, you can see that black's king is actually quite exposed. White's king is much safer. And this is really dangerous. Black is in massive trouble. So, for example, bishop f7. This didn't happen, but watch. I mean, white's pieces just fly into the attack here. This is incredibly dangerous. Every single one of white's pieces is on the attack. Look at that knight on b6, dreadfully placed. Knight on b4, just way out of the action. So, knight f4 played, bishop f5, knight e5. I mean, you know, white is just going forward here. Opens up the bishop's diagonal. That knight dreadfully placed on b6. The bishop on f5, rather loose. And yes, the king is in trouble. g6 protects that bishop because, well, there's a discovered attack was threatened. G4, well, white is pushing on. And if the bishop drops back, well, I think there's lots of good moves here, but you know, you could take G5 and, and the bishop comes to H3. So Carlson decided to play bishop E4, giving up a pawn. So Caruana took. Now, if rook takes immediately, then knight A2, that's Still, you know, that's messy, actually, because this knight can bounce back into play. So, first of all, Caruana played a3. And Carlson played here the very natural knight d5, bringing that knight back into the centre. The computer suggests knight c2. And not take you on a3, which would leave the knight really offside. But computer suggests an extraordinary move, rook e7. Now I think for any human to see this in a game would be very, very difficult. Uh, and the idea is that this knight threatens to take on d4 and then rook takes knight. And actually, you know, according to the computer, uh, black has good chances to, to equalize this position. But as I said, that is a very, very difficult couple of sequences, a couple of moves to to see, because knight c2 just looks odd in itself, and, and you know knight d5 is a far more natural move. Caruana took on e4, so he's a pawn up, but Carlson was hoping to gain some counterplay here. Right over to you again. What should White play in this position? Looks like Carlsen is fighting back with rook c3. But after this next move, it was very clear that Caruana had a really potent initiative. White play, are you ready? Knight d7. Great move. Great move. So this just opens up White's pieces um, and prepares to get through to the king. So let's look at the captures. First of all, knight takes d7, knight takes d5. Whoops, rook attacked, knight e7, and a fork. Not good. Okay, knight takes f4. First of all, let's play a knight check. And then rook takes. And this is actually a really difficult position for black. If rook takes b3, for example, rook e4, followed by rook e7. It's impossible for black to defend against this threat. and. That basically gives white a winning attack. Yes, notice if rook c7, then knight e8 with a lovely fork. Carlson, after knight d7, took the pawn. 
then knight takes knight, knight takes knight, and here is the key move. That knight is holding black's position together. It covers e7. It covers f6. So what do you do? You attack it. It's that simple. If that's defended, well, that's an easy one to spot, and a knight fork on f6. If, well, I mean, it, it, this is very tough. If, if knight e3, then check. You know, watch what happens. Rook here. Um, well, king f8. There's a nice discovered check here. Takes the rook. Or if check, the king comes up the board and h4 is mate. So let's come back here. Rook e5 played. Knight c3. Beg your pardon. Knight c3 played. And after Caruana's next move, Carlson resigned. He played knight f6 check. Well, perhaps slightly premature resignation, but there is no doubt that black is lost here. Well, let's go through the alternatives. First of all, king h8, not a good one. Rook e7, and that's pretty bad. Mate on h7, very attractive checkmate. Okay, what about king g7? Well, in this case, you can just push that pawn. And you can see that black's pieces on the queen side are just way out of out of place, offside. So, for example, knight b5 tries to stop this check. King is still in trouble. And here's a nice move, d6. There's lots of ways to play this, but d6 is, is winning. For example, takes here. The knight moves. Okay, let's, let's take a pawn and check. Well, if king here, then that's mate in a couple. Let's just put that down there. And if king g8, then you've got knight e7 with a fork. So you can see that white's initiative is just irresistible. It just rolls on. If king f8, well, this is very similar. Um, d5 again, and basically black just doesn't, doesn't have a defense against this. Well, I have to say, that was a really convincing victory uh, by Fabiana Caruana. Excellent play. Uh, very much in his style. It's kind of solid control. And then when it came to the tactics, you know, he calculated that superbly and had a really good grasp of the tactics when it, when it became very complicated. As for Carlsen, I think he will be bitterly disappointed. That was absolutely not up to his usual standards. Um, you know, he's worse going into this endgame. However, he's a long way from lost here. Uh, but I think, for example, that move rook c7, somehow, you know, the tactics just didn't work after rook c1. I think he just underestimated that move. Very nicely played by Caruana. Right, well, there was one other uh, classical game that was decisive in that first round. Uh, Gukesh defeated... Uh, Firu's Jar, very nice. Um, the rules in this tournament, if games are drawn, then they go to an Armageddon game where white has 10 minutes, black has 7. Of course, black has draw odds. Um, so there were three Armageddon games where Mamadjarov won out, uh, Giri won out, and Wesley So won out. Uh, you get three points for a win in, classical, in the classical game. You get one and a half points if you won in the Armageddon. Um, anyway, you can check out the rules on the Norway Chess site. Uh, but it is definitely worth winning a game in, in the classical tournament because you get three points. Right, um, there's more coming soon. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see, can Carlson fight back? Um, can the kids... Um, you know, make, a, make their mark against, you know, the, the top players. Really interesting to see that Gukesh 
just 17 years old. He had his birthday a couple of days ago. Um, you know, winning in the first round. Good stuff. Thanks for watching.